Hey there everybody, Barry Bazaar here. Welcome to module one of the Be Your Own Barista Brewmaster course. Now this module is called Know Your Beans, okay? Um, I've got a saying that you can't have good coffee without good beans, all right? I don't care what kind of device that you're using to prepare your coffee. If you're gonna start off, with, if you start off with bad beans, you're gonna have a bad product. You're gonna have this bad, flavorless, very bitter, dark substance, okay? Now, growing up, if you're anything like me growing up, you know, you grew up with a Maxwell House, you grew up with the Folgers, all right? A lot of this pre-ground coffee, um, that just really didn't taste good. Um, I thought that was coffee. That was the majority of, of coffee, and I thought that's what it was. It was just this bitter sweet, you know, not really sweet, but it was just like this bitter drink that you'd add cream and sugar on top just to make it taste good. Um, and that's, you know, gave you your caffeine buzz, and then you went out and did whatever you had to do throughout the day. Um, it wasn't really until I was traveling the country and I stayed with somebody in Asheville, North Carolina. He was a uh, local roaster and um, he got me to try one of his coffees. And it was, I think it was like a lighter, it was like a light to medium roast. He roasted it probably like a day, like one day prior. He made it for me and I drank this thing. And my eyes just like kind of like lit up. I went, what did you do to this? You know, this, this thing tastes like a blueberry muffin. What would you put in this thing? And he said it was nothing. He said he didn't put anything. It was all about the region from where he bought the bean, uh, you know, how it was processed and how he roasted it. So there's a lot of factors that go into the flavor of your actual coffee beans, okay? I can do a whole entire course on just coffee alone, all right? I want to make it very, very simple. So, what I've given you is I've given you a diagram of the coffee belt and all the different regions and countries that actually grow coffee and the, actually, the actual flavor profile of each region. All right, I want you to start looking at that, studying that, okay? Now, along the coffee belt, there's three main regions in the world that produce a lot of the coffee, okay? Um, you have the Latin American region, all right? A lot of these coffees have like a cocoa-ness to it, a very high acidity, all right? They're processed by a um, process known as washed processing or wet processing. The bean, the coffee cherries actually, they get pulped and then they, the actual uh, beans that have the, uh, it's a, layer around the beans, kind of like a honey uh, layer called the mucilage. The mucilage in the beans, they get dumped in these huge tanks, huge fermenting tanks, where they ferment for about one to three days, or sometimes even longer. And um, after the ferment fermentation process is done, the mucilage kind of just dissolves. And then they wash the beans they clean the beans uh, through a process of washing that's where the name wash process comes from uh, these beans tend to be very clean very bright um, very 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 um, they've got a, uh, a very high acidity to them so if you like high acidic coffees um, but you also don't like that bright clean taste you want to look at the latin american region when buying your coffee uh, the uh, another region is the African region. Okay, um, a lot of these beans are processed through just a, a drying process. There's no water involved. Um, where the actual coffee cherries, they set them out on a flat bed in the sun, and they let them dry for about a few days. And the the actual fruit gets really hard. Then they pulp it. And they remove the bean from the cherry all at once and the fruit actually gets stuck to the cherry so with these coffees you're going to get a heavy body to them you're going to get lots and lots of fruit notes to it um they're really real like some of the flavors that you get from 
uh, an African coffee are absolutely amazing. So uh, look at the look at the African region, and um, if you find something that looks interesting, you know, in the next module we'll go and we'll find them. In the uh, the other region, you've got the Indonesian region. Okay, these coffee beans, a lot of these coffee beans are um, go through a processing known as semi-washed. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, pretty much the beans are probably put in water. They're put in water for about an hour or two. They kind of soak them for a little bit. And then they take the, the wet uh, cherries and they put them out on a flat, bread, uh, flat bed to dry. And with these type of coffees, you're going to get more of like an herbal taste, a spiciness to it. Uh, medium body, but you're still going to get those fruit notes as well. So, um, so yeah, so we've got those regions. All right. You're going to look at those. Also, what you want to remember is good coffee uh, grows at higher altitudes. There's two types of beans in the world. Um, two types of main beans, actually. Um, you have Arabica beans and you have Robusta beans. Now, Robusta beans, they're grown at lower elevation. They're really big. They've got a lot of caffeine, um, but they're very bitter. So we don't want to, we don't even want to look at those. That's going to be like your Maxwell House coffee that gives you a big caffeine jolt, but it's going to be very bitter. It's not going to have a good taste to it unless you mix it with cream and sugar. Um, we want to stay with, away from those beans. What we want are the beans that grow at, el uh, at elevations of 3,000 to 6,000 feet. And these beans are known as Arabica beans, which you probably heard thanks to Starbucks. These beans are a lot harder. They grow at higher altitudes, which um, the climate, you know, they have the perfect climate where they've got a lot of sun, they got a lot of rainfall, but they also have those cool nights that actually slow down the maturation process of the bean itself. So the bean gets really, really hard and it has, um, it just uh, builds up all of this flavor. So, Ribica beans, that's what we want. We want to know. Um, the elevation between 3,000 and 6,000 feet and then from there on we want to look at the uh, processing and what part of the world and when it comes to that that's going to be your that's going to be your preference because I want you to kind of I actually kind of want you to get a coffee coffee that's from each different region and I want you to kind of just uh, do a taste test and compare them um, each uh, each different coffee has just something new to bring to the table. It's gonna it'd be really really fun once you start uh, drinking and and sipping and tasting those notes. It's it's excellent. It's fantastic. Um, the last thing that you want to know about good coffee is the roast. So you know you've got the coffee that's grown, it's processed. Now it's time to actually get roasting. Um, you've got anywhere from a mild roast to a dark roast. All right, mild roast, you get more flavor from the bean. A dark roast, you're getting more flavor from the actual roast. So when we're looking at roasting or different um, types of roasts, we want to go through more, we want to look for more of a medium to a uh, light roast so, so we can actually taste the uh, flavor from the bean and not just the roast itself. So, look at all the information I've given you, um, dive in, get excited, and then I'll see you in the next module, and we're going to actually go and find our coffee. All right, take it easy.